Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This morning, I went to my local shopping center and I tried on a bunch of clothing that's currently considered to be trendy. After trying them on, I thought I would give you a little bit of an overview of what are the current wearable spring trends and then also what are my favorites and what are the worst of the trends. I am always surprised that there are so many clothing pieces that involve at least one trend and sometimes I'll see a piece with at least two to three trends in that one item. So knowing what the trends are just makes me more aware of what I'm actually purchasing and whether it's right for me. As a little FYI before we get started, I have not purchased any of the pieces I've tried on, so please don't feel like you have to buy anything or that you have to build your wardrobe according to what's trendy. Trends are very cyclical, so there are honestly so many trends that I already have in my wardrobe and I'm just getting inspiration of how to wear it, how to style it in new ways. I've just decided as of right now that I'm gonna use the tier list system so you know exactly where things rank on my best to worst kind of chart. The first trend I tried on is crochet. And from what I've seen, I feel like the crochet trend can really range from being really colorful and fun and funky to something that is a little bit more feminine and classic. The one that I was more interested in are the ones that look a little bit more like lace as opposed to um, having those really funky you know, 60s and 70s inspired prints. I came across this dress. This dress is from Isabel Moran. It was actually in the clearance section and it had this lace detailing around the neckline and then down the dress that I felt like was a really subtle and wearable way to have a little bit of this crochet trend in our looks. I also found this skirt that had these beautiful patterns going down the skirt. I don't know technically whether this is crochet accents or whether it's like embroidery anglais kind of look. No matter what it technically is, I feel like it does remind me of the crochet trend. It feels like a really subtle take on some of the beautiful Ellie Saab outfits and it can be a really great accent to add to a classic white skirt. Going in a slightly different direction, I also tried on this really chunky cardigan and it had all these loopy pieces on the sleeve. This feels like a reference to crochet because I often see crochet lace pieces combined with fringing or in this case, loops. And this also feels like the crochet trend, but in a slightly different direction. You can actually also look at this piece and think of another trend, which is the handcrafted trend. I feel like I spoke about this in a past video, but making clothes yourself and having things be imperfect and handcrafted has been, I feel like, an ongoing trend. I gotta say, this piece is from H&M, and it's as far as you can get from handcrafted, handmade, I feel like you're much better off if you like the look, making something yourself. I've been really getting into knitting. This is the future top half of my sweater and fiber art is something that I absolutely love right now. I'm going to put crochet towards the top of my tier list just because I don't feel like this is new. 10 years ago, I was really into self-portrait and a lot of their lace patterns kind of remind me of the crochet trend right now. The Cezanne blouse I'm wearing, as well as a lot of Cezanne blouses with a lace pattern, also I feel I fit into this trend right now. This tier list is definitely what I like, what I find wearable, so let me know in the comments how you would rank these pieces in your list. Let's talk about the ballet core trend. So I actually used to do ballet, I did it for like 15 hours a week for a good number of years. I've been seeing ballet core come up in a few different types of pieces. The first one will be this light pink shade and often it's combined with knitwear or maybe a really flowy romantic dress that reminds me of ballet. We've got some knitwear pieces so different crossover cardigans, leg warmers. These are generally what you wear to warm up in ballet and this is also part of the look. The third thing I've been seeing is a little bit of chul or netting in skirts. So this is your classic reference to the tutu. And then of course, you've also got ballet flats, ranging from really classic um, with a strap to ones that actually look like the point shoe. I've also been seeing more bodysuits, and these are obviously references to leotards. Um, which is a classic ballet piece. With this trend, I feel like if we talk about leg warmers and if we go like full out with the netting and the chul, I find this look kind of hard to wear on the streets. If you have a particular aesthetic that is more niche, you can definitely make this work, you can make anything work. But for most people, I would say this is a little bit hard to pull off um, every day on the streets. Some of the pieces, like a cute little crossover cardigan or a pretty ballet pink dress, I think can be really versatile. And these are the pieces that I feel like are more wearable 
and could be timeless. Then I feel like this trend is quite wearable and it'll go fairly high on the list as well. There's actually a lot to cover in denim. So one of the biggest denim trends I've been seeing is the maxi denim skirt. So I tried on two in store. One I tried on in Zara, one from my department store. And I feel very divided about this category. Should we start with the good or bad? This denim skirt I tried on here from Zara was a really, really uncomfortable skirt. Because it's really long, because the denim was really rigid, it was honestly quite hard to move around in. And my biggest recommendation is that if you buy a denim skirt, don't get something that is too long. And if it's really long, you need to make sure that there is a little bit of give in the denim fabric. It's got the slits on the front and the back, but even then, it's really more your thigh and your knee area that feels very restricted and it's hard to actually walk in the skirt. I also tried on another skirt and this one was a little bit shorter. Because it was shorter, because it was a little bit less fitted around the hip and upper leg, it was a lot more wearable. This is the kind of skirt that I'm hoping to add to my wardrobe one day. I feel like this can be really versatile. I like denim, I love skirts, and this felt really perfect. This was a much more practical, um, comfortable, you can wear it, skirt. I'm gonna rate this denim skirt trend slightly on the lower side, not because I don't love it, but because I really haven't come across that many denim skirts I feel like are very wearable. A lot of them I have found are quite hard to walk in. A lot of them just don't feel like it's good quality denim, maybe because it is so trendy right now. If this trend stays around for a while and it goes from really trendy to a bit more timeless and more denim brands start to do it using better denim, then that is when I would love to pick this one up. Baggy jeans are really popular, so I tried on a few pairs, one from Zara and one from Uniqlo. Again, Zara just honestly doesn't impress me that much. It was more expensive than the Uniqlo one, but it was honestly so uncomfortable and I didn't even like the way it looked. The Uniqlo one was a lot better. I felt like this one was much more flattering and it was just a looser, more comfortable denim as well. Both of these are a mid-rise, and I kind of wish that they would do this baggy jean in a high-rise. I know that the point of a baggy jean is that it's more effortless, so that's why they combine it with the mid-rise, but for me, I just love high-rise, and it makes my legs look longer, which is something I really want as someone petite. If I'm being completely honest with myself, I feel like the baggy jean look looks best when it's a little bit longer and it almost drags on the floor. That is obviously highly impractical, so by the time I tailor it, I'm not sure how much I will like it. This one is going to sit a little bit lower on my list because I don't mind the baggy jean. But because the baggy jean is meant to be effortless, it's always combined with mid-rise and I like a high-rise, so that doesn't really work. I also like longer baggy jeans, which aren't practical. So for me, I don't think this trend is going to work and it's going to sit a little bit lower. The final denim trend is a head-to-toe denim look. This one I like because it's more of a styling trend rather than things you need to buy. I happen to be in store, so I tried on some pieces there. What I like about this trend is that Denim looks really effortless, and when you combine two pieces together, I really feel like it looks very, very chic. What I don't like about this look is that denim can be quite rigid, so if you look better in flowy pieces, a head-to-toe denim look can actually be quite hard to pull off. So for me, being petite, I feel like it really depends on each of us individually, our body shape, um, whether we look good in structure or flowy pieces, to know whether this trend will actually work. This one will go in the middle. I like it for the vibe, but it loses some points because I think the structure and the bulkiness of denim is not always the most flattering. Let's have a look at handbags now. I'm definitely not keeping this bag, but I wanted to bring it home just to show you how it would look with different outfits. This bag is a part of the oversized bag trend and I've been seeing this for a while now. I especially see this one a lot on the Bottega Veneta runway. Um, you always see the models with the huge oversized bags. As someone petite, I have fully embraced the mini bag trend over the last five years or so. I love mini bags because I feel like they look very proportional with my height. So the big bag trend is a little bit polarizing. Big structured bags are my absolute nightmare. I to carry this huge Michael Kors blue bag. I feel like when I was holding it, it pretty much covered like most of my torso. What I do like about this bag on my shoulder is that it's slouchy and I find that to be a little bit more wearable for a big bag. If you need a big bag, this is what I would recommend, the slouchier style versus something too structured. Let me know if you disagree because I'm still on the fence about this, 
but I do feel like this big bag because it slouches sits quite naturally against my body and especially compared to that Michael Kors bag I have in mind this feels a lot more flattering on the body I also went into Uniqlo and I tried on this really slouchy nylon bag it's huge, it's crossbody but because of the fabric and the slouch it doesn't look too bad I'm definitely still not a big bag person I love my mini bags but this has kind of made me see that Maybe a slightly bigger bag in a slouchy shape is okay. So I don't constantly have to carry my two bags. This one also goes in the middle. I'm kind of starting to warm to the idea of a slouchy larger bag, but I'm still not fully convinced either. Let's talk about some color trends right now. And with color, I feel like it's so personal to what you look good in and what you like. When there is a color of the season, sometimes it just means that a color we love is now in every type of clothing whereas normally it might be actually quite hard to find sometimes it also introduces me to a color that i feel like i look pretty good in and then other times a color that i feel like i look very very bad in it's always a little bit fun for me to try on a new color and that's what i feel like color trends are about today i want to specifically talk about the trend of acid green this trend is very loud it's very bold and i think generally pretty hard to pull off every day. I also found that by the time this acid green went from the runway into the stores, it had gone into a slightly more wearable, slightly more muted green. And this shade I find okay. You'll see me try it on in the dress as well as the separates and I don't find it too hard to wear. I wasn't a huge fan of the cut and the style of these pieces but the actual color itself I thought was pretty wearable. I also have a cardigan from Cezanne in this really beautiful bright green shade and that is a piece I I feel like it's almost this acid green shade but because it's in knitwear and it's a bit more muted it's actually really wearable the next trend color i want to talk about is red and what i like about this one is that unlike green it's a little bit more fuss free if you go slightly warmer slightly cooler you can find a shade that will work beautifully for your skin tone so that's kind of the reason that i do rank red pretty high on my list of wearability i think that it's a classic color and it's a color that will look good on most people. I tried on these red pieces at H&M. I went into there because I felt like they would obviously have lots of trend pieces and I wasn't wrong. Um, so I found these two red pieces. What I've learned about my own preferences is that I like red combined with a more casual texture. So instead of something high shine or too flat and boring, I like it combined with knitwear that's a little bit fuzzy. This is so not a rule, it's such a preference. I just don't really like red satin. And I don't like flat fabrics in red. I much prefer them slightly textured, but red is high on my list. I think it's very versatile and a very beautiful color. And I'm also just naturally, I think, quite drawn to this color after discovering a few red pieces I love. Let's talk a little bit about this sheer clothing trend. The thing about sheer clothing is that if you wear some boxier, bulkier pieces of clothing, a little bit of sheerness can be actually really flattering. If you're wearing some jeans that are heavier, if you're wearing a more structured pant, a slightly sheer top actually gives a really beautiful texture and contrast to the bottom. They can also have this really ethereal, angelic feel to them, and that is also such a vibe so I also get that. I generally find sheer tops somewhat easy to work with, especially if there's like a smart design to it that covers like the places I want covered. With skirts and trousers, I find it a lot more complicated and annoying. Dresses as well. I tried on this top from H&M and it felt very strategic in the design where there was a little bit more coverage along the bodice and then it was sheerer at the top and the sleeves. I loved how drapey and flowy this was and I do feel like the sheerness created a lightness to the look. I'm putting this lower on the list because I only like sheerness in my tops and my blouses and I don't really like them in any other clothing. So this one definitely goes a little bit lower. Something else I've been seeing a lot are these dresses that are very like open knit with the holes throughout. When I was doing the try on, I saw one from Anina Bing. I feel like this trend is great if you are often at a lovely tropical resort. I can see myself, you know, wearing a swimsuit, putting this on, and going to dinner. But unless I'm on holiday, I probably wouldn't ever think of wearing this anywhere else. This is a pretty daring piece, I think, to wear every day, but I have seen it in different knitwear options as well. I see a lot of cardigans and sweaters that have this open knit design, 
and they're quite pretty and quite easy to wear because you can obviously just layer a tank top or a long sleeve merino knit on the inside and it adds this cool pattern and texture to the knit overall this trend still sits pretty low because I don't love the way it looks it's not super exciting to me um, to want to fuss with it too much and of course it has the downside of not serving the function of clothing in that it doesn't really keep us warm or protected or anything at all the sun is like setting um, but it's perfect timing i've only got one left and that is skirts skirts of every kind seems to be trendy right now from your mini to your maxi to your knee length skirts which I read somewhere were also trendy. If you've been here before, you know how I feel. I'm okay with a very mini skirt because I feel like they can be quite elongating, but they're obviously impractical because I just have to worry and fuss with it every time I'm outside and the wind blows. With knee length skirts, I feel like I look very bad in them because it makes me as someone quite petite look even shorter. Midi skirts have always been very, very well loved in my wardrobe, but I feel like maxi is also something I have fully, fully embraced. I would say I like maxi probably even more than I like midi. And this is a trend that goes like right at the very, very top of my list. Maxi skirts actually aren't really even a trend for me anymore. I feel like it's definitely up there in the forever staples, must have, will always wear kind of pieces. This is how my list is looking from best to worst. Let me know in the comments if it was up to you, what would you put at the best end and what would you put as the worst? If you enjoyed any part of today's video, I would love you to go give it a like, consider subscribing and also say hi to me over at Instagram. Uh, this is my handle. Thank you for watching, have a lovely week ahead and I'll see you next one. Bye.